All right, I want to welcome you to another video on my channel, the Droopy Sack channel. If you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe and hit that like button. Uh, that lets me know that I'm um, hitting a nerve in a, in a good way and I'm doing something constructive and helping other people. You know what I'm saying? So hook a brother up with a like and a subscribe if you haven't yet subscribed. So how many times have you felt like you losing has negatively impacted your performance? Or how about this? You make every single attempt to get the beacons and kill as many bots to get as much damage as you possibly can. And it just seems that everyone on your team is freaking camping and they're not going for beacons and you end up losing a match. But you gave everything. You get so freaking frustrated. How many times have you been in a, in a negative state and have felt you get angrier and angrier and angrier and it just makes you make more and more mistakes? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you some examples that I have that of my own gameplay and also a little bit of uh, the sports psychology aspect of competition. And I know this isn't physical sport. This is uh, electronic mobile app type of, of sport, but you get what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying? So without further ado, I'm going to show you in, in this chart, like, uh, of course, I'm going to be looking at you and also looking down so that I can make sure that I'm, I'm putting the, the writing and stuff in the right spots. But I'm also going to be looking at you both like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> uh, I'm recording a four quadrant. A, um, it's, it's basically the, the correlation between the psychology and the mechanics of sport and the outcomes, basically. Uh, how our attitude, arousal, excitement impact our performance, both positively or negatively. Okay. And we're using the four quadrants here. And we're going to look at the X axis here being excitement, stress, arousal, and alertness. The y-axis, the vertical line, is performance, okay? Now, you're gonna see three quadrants, or, or three, three columns, and the columns are optimal focus, broad focus, and uh, narrow focus. Now, let's look at broad focus. Now, if we're gonna look at, um, let's say that the, the baseline here is zero, zero x-axis, zero, zero x-axis, and zero y-axis, okay? And the possible 10, which is heightened, I'm talking about that person sees noises, drinks caffeine, or drinks a freaking Red Bull, has drank a Monster, had a, a, a Ritalin, and some coffee. That fool can see noises. They're like, you know what I mean? You know that person, right? And then the performance aspect, which is a possible 10, which is 100% in, in flow, in state, can't be faded. That person just is, is on point, right? An incredible athlete, both on and off the field, has done all the preparation, just knows where they stand, and they don't even have to think about it. They just flow, and you know some players like that. But how about when we lose on a regular basis? How does that impact us? How does it impact our mind? We have to take that into account when we're starting to look at ways that we can improve performance. So let's look at, let's say that we're at a, a, a three in arousal, excitement, stress. We're at a three right here, okay? And what generally happens is that it follows an inverted U, an inverted U, and we're at a three arousal. Let's follow it all the way up to where it intersects and then go to a possible performance. So let's say that we're at an arousal of three, excitement at, at a three, zero to 10, zero is sitting in a chair, sleeping after watching I Love Lucy, and a 10, again, like I was saying, is overstimulated, overstressed, over aroused. So it looks like we're almost like at a, maybe a six, a six in performance. You get what I'm saying? A zero to 10. Zero is doing nothing and nobody, just none performance, just absolutely, just doesn't even show up. You just don't even show up. And a 10 is just inflow, in state, just it all comes together. An elite level, you know what I'm saying? So a six performance. So a broad focus is that person is bored, understimulated, more mistakes are made, they're tired, they have slow reaction time, easily distracted, low heart rate, tense, and performance is poor. Okay? Now let's look at let's look at the opposite end of the of the pendulum swing. In 
the narrow focus, the narrow focus, let's say that we're overstressed, over anxious. We're just so freaking angry because we keep losing. Let's say we're at a nine or 10, nine or a 10. Now the 10 obviously is already intersected at a zero, right? Zero here, that line, X axis, they, they're, they're not even going up a point, a, a point, zero point, you know what I'm saying? Or a nine, they get up to maybe a two, a two in performance. Remember, we got to follow it across the line and see where they intersect. So narrow focus is that it's like almost looking looking through a toilet toilet roll to, uh, tube, um, the cardboard tube, and that's all you're looking through. You can't see anything outside of it, like horses with blinders on. You can't see in your peripheral vision. <sighs> anxiety, narrow focus, anxiety, more mistakes, shaky, foggy head, muscles are stiff, slow reaction time, high heart rate, fatigue, poor performance. I'm not insulting your intelligence. I know you can feel me on what I'm saying, so I'm not going to I'm not going to keep, you know, what do they call it? beating the dead horse with it. Let's look at we're at a 5 arousal, 5 excitement, 5 excitability. Let's follow it all the way up. At a 10, or let's say conservative around an 8 or a 9 in this area here. Optimal optimal focus is that person is 100% focus, less mistakes are made, they're energetic, they're alert, moderate heart rate, resistant to fatigue, loose and agile, quick reaction time, and excellent performance. You get what I'm saying? So when you lose and you lose and you lose, all you're focused on is the aggression towards that that you're engaging with, the game, and then you start to blame it on things like the bugs in the game or, or your electronic devices or campers or, 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 and then you just keep focusing on everything else but you. So if we look at it, the broad focus, the person over here, the broad focus, let's say that that person is a baseball player in right field. Now with baseball, I haven't played baseball in a long time, but I know that in baseball, that right fielder, like little league and high school and stuff, that ball doesn't get hit to that person very often. So that person has the likelihood of looking around, looking at all the people walking around the stands, seeing the, 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 the people, their family members, the people that are outside the fence behind them, just like watching or having conversations, the cars passing by. They're focusing on all of that in addition to the game. So their focus is spread so thin. Now the narrow focus is the pitcher. Let's say that the pitcher is narrow focus. Um, 100% right there at the at the home plate, whatever's in that box, that's all he's paying attention to because he's so freaking stressed out about not getting the ball straight to the, the, the catcher's mitt in that strike zone. He doesn't want to walk another player and he doesn't also want to throw another um, another ball because it goes against him and he doesn't want to hit get the ball like right there at that sweet spot for that per particular batter that's going to hit it right up the middle and smash it right into the forehead of the pitcher. And they're like, ha, ha, ha. You get, you get what I'm saying? It's like pushing the gas pedal and the brake at the exact same time. The engine is 100%, but the car is going nowhere. Think about what that does to your adrenal glands and your body in general. And optimal focus, optimal focus, that person's in the zone. Just, he doesn't even have to think or she doesn't even have to think. They just perform. They get it, they're in the zone. All right, now let's look at some of the mistakes that I made and I'm going to classify them right off the bat as narrow or broad focus, meaning I'm focused either on one thing. I'm only focused on that one bot that my red, my, the red team, that one bot that I'm engaging, or I'm focusing on so many things across the board that I start to make more mistakes. So let's look at this situation here. This guy, he's already guarding this beacon. He's been guarding the beacon for a good amount of time. And I'm thinking I'm going to get over there and I'm going to drop the hammer on him. But this guy over here, he's, he's going to get it, but I'm, I'm focusing on him. But then I transfer my 100% of my focus on this guy and no, dis no regard for this guy. Let's see how that happens or see how the end result would be. Okay. So down, I'm looking at him. He jumps. And he's going to be jumping over here. This guy is going to be slowly creeping around. But because I'm focusing on this guy over here, I'm not even looking at this guy as being a threat to me. He jumps and I start to engage early because I don't, I don't, 
I'm just I'm just not waiting. I just I want to get those rounds, and now I'm starting to deplete my my salvo. Now this guy is is on my left. He's probably at like a 10 o'clock, and, and I continue to gauge. Now I just basically ran out of rounds, and instead of actually retreating, I stand there waiting. Now let's look at a good example of being in optimal state. An optimal state, like I said before, is you're aroused just enough, you are excited just enough that you you, you make uh, your performance, your focus is is perfect. You're taking into account everything that's in your field of view. Now I'm looking at all of my guys over here have been trying to take out these ant slots. It was a wall of them. I think it was three of them at one point, four of them at one point. I'm looking at this guy over here at center beacon that's engaging my boy on the ramp. And I'm looking at my boy here engaging these guys. And now I have a little long range advantage. I mean, it's not that much, not considered much long range. Um, I, I got the longer range so that I can be able to take out the Ansel shield. I'm at 420 meters on this, these Ancelots here. And this guy is rolling in a uh, Rogatka, if I remember correctly. So I'm firing on these guys, trying to take down their Ansel shields so that my boy over here can start taking out them with the mullets. Ansel shield is down. Now I know that this guy right here is ready and he's gonna be starting to come over here to engage me. I know it, I know it in my heart. That's what the dude is about to do. He's got the beacon and he's gonna make his way over here because there's no one over here to engage. All the enemy, his enemy, is over here, which is us. I'm still firing, I'm exhausting all my rounds. Now I know that he's starting to make his way over here. My focus, I'm looking at my periphery vision. I'm not looking directly at him. I'm looking at where my crosshairs are, right? Now, because I've noticed that he drops, in my periphery vision now, I'm focused on him and waiting for my mullets to, um, to recharge or regenerate, you know, reload. And I also know that he has Orkins. Now I can't zoom in right here, but I, I just know that the, the, the profile of him, he has Orkins and he will take my health down to a, to a nothing real quick. I'm waiting for him to fire. I'm not really worried about this guy because I'm getting closer and closer to that little wall right here. And I, I just know where this spot is and where he is and it, chances are I'm not gonna get hit if I get down a little lower from based on personal experience. That's what I'm thinking about. So I was able to dodge that. Now, I still have my jump. These guys, they're slowly regen regenerating their Ansel shield. And he jumps. So he's now in that 300 meter. I'm now in his 300 meter range. And he starts to fire right now, right? I immediately align my legs to jump, to get out of the way. Now, I now, I'm now out of his realm of, of influence, if you will. I can't be touched by him, but now I have direct line of sight for these Ancelots here. But I'm still watching this guy because he's a little sneaky guy. Trying to take them down as much as I can to help out my boys so that they can go for center beacon. Now see, I, in my periphery vision, I'm looking at this guy still because he's still alive, he's still a threat. Now I'm checking to see what his health is. Ah, he's definitely a threat. He, sit, he still has his speed, and he still has his both of his organs. Still waiting for my... I have six seconds left at this point. Waiting for my, my boys to reload. And I'm still paying attention to where he is. And also them. I start firing at them. I'm keeping my eye on him, but in my periphery, I'm paying attention to where this guy Kyle is. Now, I can no longer in, impact these guys because they've left this area where they're now on the other side of that little barrier over there. This guy drops in into the wide open and I start to lay it on him. Now I'm taking into account he's going back over to the other side of the of the barrier and there's a guy that has some long range, I, I think that was a treb. It might have been a treb. And I'm trying to get the guy at center beacon, also paying attention to this guy over here who's who's been our biggest headache the entire game. So I'm like, you know what? I'm not gonna stay in this spot much longer. I need to drop out of the spot and I need to go for this dude over here. So I make my long trek. <laughs> Let's speed it up. I'm paying attention here to what his, his behavior is doing. What, yeah, what his behavior is doing. 
um, what his behavior is, <laughs> not doing. And I'm seeing how, how my teammates are interacting with these guys and also him. This guy is way off in the distance. And yeah, 800. So he's probably a good 800 meters from my boys or at least a 600 meter. So I have 500 meters that I need to get within in order to make a negative, negative uh, a positive <laughs> damage. Positive for my situation, but negative for him. So I need to get over to him as quick as possible. So let me fast forward this. So I get into like where I know I'm, I'm about to land in that, that um, 500 meet within that 500. So the angle of my legs is I'm going this way. I'm not going straight out here because I'm gonna be in his direct line of sight. When I jump out here, I'm gonna be in, I'm gonna be using this area, this, this, this roof or something as, a, as cover, a temporary cover, right? Jump and I'm just rolling like a pimp. Now look at it, I'm now 470 meters, rolling like a pimp with an arm out the window, just chilling, of course with my seatbelt on, and I drop. Now as soon as I drop, I'm waiting for this like little area right here to clear. This is what I'm thinking about. I'm waiting for that little area to clear, then I'm gonna start firing because of my splash damage. Bam. And most of them clear, so I've knocked his health down. Now at this point, I know my teammates over here realize this guy is getting taken out and they're gonna to start to contribute to the cause. They're gonna to try to take him out also. So because now his focus is on me, where do those rounds come from? Oh my gosh, somebody crept on a come up, like Bone Thugs in Harmony. <laughs> I'm always thinking like that. And then these guys have that little window, these, little guy, these guys over here, have the window to be able to get over to this guy and help me take him out. CMD right here. I'm gonna try to corner shoot him, but corner shooting isn't gonna do much because I, I wasn't able to, to see my, 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 my whatever pad. <laughs> so he was able to take him out, bam. I mean, it was almost as if like we all were in flow, we were all in state making this thing happen. Okay, and, it, and, it, and it's beautiful when it all works out like that. And sometimes it does when you have random teammates. You get, you get what I'm saying? So um, the next thing, okay. And the next thing we're gonna do is, we're, I'm gonna bring up my, um, oh, let's see. Oh, I have to get exit out of this, out of this. So this is the, this is the video that I'm editing. And then, let's see, I haven't used PowerPoint in so long. Uh, preview mode, slideshow. All right, perfect. All okay. right, so I haven't done, um, I haven't done uh, uh, whatever it's called, um, PowerPoint in a long time, but this is you know straight on point. So how to grow when losing matches. First thing you need to do is you need to inventory how you're physically feeling inside. The physical, how your arms are feeling, your, ar your legs, your neck, your throat, your mouth, your head, your legs, everything. Are you tense, stressed? And I'm gonna read it verbatim. I'm not that good with uh, doing presentations when you know, getting in front of people and be like, all right, well, you know, the first thing you gotta do is look up at slide one and I ain't like that at all. Uh, intense, in uh, anxious, anxiety, angry. The first thing I would do is put down your device and walk away from it. That's it. If you're in a squad, be real with them and let them know that your mind is not here in the present and they will definitely respect that because if your performance is negatively impacted because of your mindset, it's gonna negatively impact the scoreboard. And that scoreboard is made up of the other five people that are on your team. You know what I'm saying? So let them know. Assess your nutritional status. When was the last time you ate? That's a, that's a big thing because a lot of people have really poor um, um, meal uh, nutritional patterns. Uh, low blood sugar is the number one reason why a lot of people uh, make consecutive mistakes because their blood sugar is low. And the number one energy source for the brain is sugar. We're not talking about going to you know eat a candy bar and Skittles and automatically going to be tight. No, nah, that's low, um, what do they call it, um, low duration um, it, it burns up really quick. It's like putting gasoline in a fire. It just ignites, it's gone. 
and, that, and you feel sluggish afterwards. Um, hydration. Uh, hydration does cause foggy headedness and um, the same symptoms as low blood sugar, but it's, it can be a lot more dangerous than low blood sugar. But low blood sugar definitely negatively impacts your hormonal levels too. Get irritable, what do they call it, hangry? Get angry quicker when your blood sugar is low. So if you're losing a lot, get some food in you. Uh, energy drinks and coffee are stimulants. Stay away from them uh, because if you're already overexcited because of losing and you're angry, you're anxious, it's only gonna make those symptoms worse and it's, gonna, it's just gonna negatively impact um, your performance from that point on. Uh, get your blood flowing and oxygenate your muscles. Get moving. Go for a walk or jog. Do some jumping jacks. Uh, the reason why I say stay away from heavy exertion with your upper body is because your chest, your upper body musculature is already probably tense from holding your game device in, the, in a specific position. Think about your biceps are already shortened. Your shoulders are already protracted like this. You're already protracted. Your neck is already flexed, so it's negatively impacting the amount of oxygen you're being you're able to get through inspiration and rest your resp respiratory process. So, go you know, stretch, stretch your ch your chest, your shoulders, your neck. I mean, there's a lot of. I mean, if you want to know what stretches to do and what things to do, I can give you um, give you some more guidance if you put in the comment section below um, what you need help with. Um, breathing is a big one. When you get stressed, angry, anxious, you tend to uh, do a lot of quick, shallow breaths from up here. <laughs> and it's all, it's, it's all basically stressing this area out even more and your brain is not getting the oxygen that it needs and, it's, and, the, and the oxygen is not going out to the, to the muscles. Um, what I would, I would do is do some, some deep diaphragmic breaths I, because I can't zoom out. Um, breathing through your belly button, pushing your belly button out trying to fill your, your stomach with, it, with air. It's really your, your lungs, but you can expand and push out your stomach. And what I would literally do is, is do uh, 20 breaths with a constant in-out ratio of four seconds. Try four seconds. Do 20 of them. And just count. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Four. And you're probably going to get dizzy and lightheaded like you just smoked a joint. You know, <laughs> It's just oxygen and your brain is thanking you for it. Um, and assess how your performance has been. Has been is past tense. I recommend recording, like an athlete, I would recommend recording your, ath your, your athletic performances, your games, so that you can go back and review where you made progress or where you regressed. The mistakes you made and also the things that you've you did correctly because for every mistake you want to know that there's some things that you are doing right you know what i'm saying um i would commit to five five games a day and record them do it for a week so that's what 35 games and that that's a that's a good heap right there uh you can go back and record like i just said um go back and review uh are you making a lot of mistakes and looking at the game footage if you're losing regularly and making a lot of mistakes it will help to figure out the scenarios in which those mistakes are happening and then ask someone who you respect, how you can correct those specific mistakes that you're making in those specific scenarios. Uh, if you're losing a lot and making very few mistakes, it might be, just be that the system hates your high winning percentage and wants to bring a player down. I mean, that's a, you know, that, when you get up to 70 something percent, what happens? You start losing all of your matches and you get down to like 15% and then it goes right back up to 75% or 74%. Are you running solo or with a squad? I've noticed, I've noticed myself with a lot of the games that I'm running solo and I have a higher probability of losing. Um, and if you are running solo, get with other good players, which will help you guys work together. So at the end, so I, I know I get, that, I get to that in the next slide. Um, if you're clanless and wanna remain clanless, Check out the scoreboard at the end of the matches and invite inviter <laughs> spelling inviter inviter the top players in your last match to squat up again, like the top three percent of uh, top three. Or you know if you get the person that's at the very bottom but ran all the beacons, that person is a gem. Um, if they accept, they do. If they don't, they don't. It is what it is. 
um, if you are with a clan, start inviting those players to squad up with you more. Uh, for me, I'm blessed to be part of the Iron Order, which we I think we have six clans or seven clans now. Um, there's a lot of players that I'm now hooked up with on a regular basis that it, all day long because they're in all different time zones. So the Iron uh, Iron clans, the Marauders, the Crusaders, all of them. Uh, great group made up of guys and girls um, all over the world. Probably the best best I've ever been in. Um, yeah, and you need to get them all on a schedule so that you guys can uh, make the stuff make the stuff happen. And the last thing is keep learning and share what you've learned with others. That's going to help you reinforce those things that you did learn. So, uh, yeah, losing sucks and losing on a regular basis does suck. I know it. I've been so freaking discouraged lately. I can't even tell you. I've thrown my iPad across the room. I've thrown my iPad across the room. I've quit the game. Like, I, I can't even tell you. Like, right now, I'm, I think, at, like, 40% winning. But I started, like, a, uh, about a week and a half ago. I was at, like, 70, 72%. And my lowest was about two days ago at, like, 16 or 18%. And I was just, I'm done. And it was, it was it's, 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 it's affecting everything in my life because I'm so pissed off on a regular basis. I'm like, there's something wrong with me. There's something wrong with the system. And I'm blaming everything else. I'm blaming everything on other things other than what I have control over. And what I have control over is my own performance. And my own performance is, is a direct correlation between how excited, aroused, uh, stressed, uh, alert I am. And if I'm too stressed, alert, excited, I'm gonna make a lot more mistakes. If I'm too under, if I'm under aroused, under excited, under stressed, under alert, I'm gonna make more mistakes. So I have to find my my healthy balance. But I wanted to share this with you so that you can uh, so you can learn from it. So as always, I hope you, your friends, and your family are all happy, healthy, and safe. And until next video, peace, my peoples.